Hello, it's Beth Wright, and I'm providing you a podcast for NUR 237, Unit 4, Chapter 52. And we are going to be talking about the musculoskeletal relaxants of this chapter. This chapter also includes your seizure, seizure medicines that you've already studied. So you only need to focus on the musculoskeletal relaxants for this unit. Okay, so let's talk about a few definitions here. Uh, the skeletal muscle relaxants are used to decrease the muscle spasms and spasticity that occurs with any kind of neurological or musculoskeletal disorder. And, you know, I'm pretty certain that we've all experienced uh, muscle spasm, uh, muscle cramps, and they're painful, they're very painful. Um, so, you know, those spasms are sudden, they're involuntary, they're painful, and, uh, you know, that's where the muscle is contracting. Uh, and it can be either a clonic or tonic type of muscle spasm. Uh, and we can have a spasticity issue where we have an increase in that muscle tone or the contraction and the stiffness. And the person will have awkward movements. Uh, and again, it's painful for individuals that experience this. So for severe muscle spasms, we may even see neuromuscular blocking agents uh, used sometimes or even general anesthetic to, uh, you know, get that calmed down. Um, clonic uh, alternating contractions and relaxation uh, and, and the tonic is sustained contractions. So just a difference in that terminology there. Now for spasticity, um, you may see this in multiple sclerosis patients or spinal cord injuries, um, traumatic brain injury patients, uh, cerebral palsy patients, or even post-stroke patients. Uh, but it's caused by nerve damage of the brain. Um, and, you know, each person is going to be different. So, you know, you got to check to make sure, you know, how certain people react with uh, these different disorders. Um, of course, treatment is going to be with medications, with antispasmodics, and that's what we're going to be talking about, but also passive range of motion and muscle stretching uh, can uh, help with this as well. So these are your exemplars for this uh, unit, or for this chapter, and we have the carisoprodol, which the trade name on that. Uh, is soma, so you may have heard that before. Uh, the baclofen, okay, so one way to remember baclofen, it's a lot of times people with back injuries have muscle spasms and they'll be given antispasmodics, so baclofen. Um, dantrolene is um, another medicine that you may have heard about or you did hear about it some time ago. Uh, with your perioperative unit, they use this particular drug with malignant hyperthermia, a condition that can happen from uh, folks receiving general anesthesia. Um, we have the cyclobenzaprine, and then we have the tizanidine. All right, so let's talk about just uh, general uh, information about these. The mechanism of action is that they depress that CNS um, and that the relaxants work by blocking the nerve impulses that causes muscle tone and contractions. And of course its use is as an adjunct uh, to other treatments such as physical therapy, that kind of thing, and uh, for anyone experiencing muscle spasms and then for the different spastic disorders that we talked about. Contraindication use in general is going to be uh, impaired renal or hepatic function. Some of these drugs are extremely 
uh, hard on the liver and uh, have black box warnings and we'll talk about those. Um, because we're dealing with a CNS depressant, we can also have uh, instances where it causes respiratory depression. Uh, so we, of course, want to be concerned about that. Um, and, you know, for folks who need to be alert for whatever they do, you know, because, again, it is a uh, central nervous system depressant, uh, it would be contraindicated uh, for individuals who have to be alert in what they do. So let's talk about these. Uh, the um, carisoparadol is contraindicated with pregnancy and lactation. Um, and um, it is used for, of course, acute pain, but should not be used on a long-term basis because it can lead to dependency. Uh, if it's stopped abruptly, it can cause withdrawal symptoms, so it's recommended to be tapered off. Um, it's contraindicated with a condition called porphyria, um, and it's kind. Of, this is kind of a weird uh, condition. It's a metabolic condition, and it's uh, inherited uh, where the por uh, porphyria enzymes build up in the body, <clears throat> and it can be an acute situation uh, that would occur in people before puberty or after menopause. And the signs and symptoms that they have are insomnia, anxiety, restlessness, constipation, uh, vomiting, diarrhea, pain in the arms, legs, and muscle pain, and tingling, numbness and weakness, and excessive sweating. So it's kind of a, a wild type of thing. Uh, so anyway, uh, it's contraindicated in that. Um, the medicine uh, can be taken by mouth. Uh, it is metabolized in the liver, so um, we want to be sure, you know, check on the liver function there. There are adverse effects, uh, drowsiness, dizziness, motor coordination affected for sure. Um, and, you know, when you think about the CNS effects, the dizziness, drowsiness, vertigo, ataxia, tremor, agitation, irritability. Um, initially, and you know, after the first, second, third, or fourth dose, a patient may exhibit uh, an allergic or idiosyncratic uh, reaction to the medicine. So we've got to be on alert for that. Um, and let's see, what else? Uh, rash. Now, with the allergic reaction or idiosyncratic reaction, we would see, you know, a reaction like a rash, uh, erythema, paritis, uh, an increase in their eosinophils, uh, hypotension, bronchospasms, um, possible vision and speech alterations, and of course, an uh, anaphylactic reaction. We have to watch about and teach about the effects of alcohol with this medicine. It's a double effect, a double whammy here because uh, alcohol is a CNS depressant as well. Uh, so we got to teach the patient to avoid alcohol when they're taking this medicine. Um, it is considered habit forming, so you know we need to let the patient know that and uh, when they discontinue it, they should not discontinue abruptly. It needs to be uh, gradually withdrawn. Uh, withdrawal, uh, abrupt withdrawal can result in headache, nausea, insomnia, and abdominal cramping. Uh, and that medicine is not recommended for children less than 12 years of age. Um, again, the teaching needs to involve not to operate machine, you know, heavy equipment, machinery, driving, that kind of thing because of those CNS effects. Uh, not to combine it with other CNS depression, uh, depressants uh, or alcohol. Uh, they can take this medicine with food. Uh, they should be careful about over-the-counter medications and cold remedies. Uh, they should, you know, consult with the health care provider about that. Um, 
they should be informed about that idiosyncratic uh, effect that can happen um, and of course need to report those to um, the health care provider for sure. Okay, back, black baclofen is uh, your next medication and it is uh, contraindicated uh, for skeletal muscle spasms that's resulting from rheumatic disorders uh, and also in pregnancy. It's used to treat spasticity due to musculoskeletal and spinal injuries. Um, it can be given PO and it can also be given intrathecal. Um, it's metabolized in the liver and excreted in the urine um, and a dose adjustment is recommended if we have impairment in those areas. Uh, the adverse effects are Again, that CNS effect, the drowsiness, dizziness, confusion, um, fatigue, headache, um, also uh, constipation, hypotension, weakness, insomnia, those things can happen. Uh, we may also with this medicine see an elevation in the blood sugar and that needs to be uh, monitored as well. And uh, the blood pressure needs to be monitored because it can cause hypotension. Uh, and we need to teach about those position changes that they can have orthostatic hypotension with that. Also, uh, genital urinary assessment needs to be done um, with respect to looking at, you know, urinary frequency and difficulty urinating as well. Other adverse effects are weight gain, um, increase in the liver enzymes, um, elevated blood sugar, um, and alkaline phosphatase um, elevation as well. So we need to take a look at those labs. Uh, when it's discontinued, we need to taper off. Again, the abrupt discontinuing of the medication can cause um, psychosis, hallucinations. Um, and for children, uh, again, uh, there's no data out there about how it affects children uh, t 12 years and less, so it's not recommended for them. Again, we need to teach the client about not stopping the drug abruptly um, and what can happen if that is the case. We need to teach about avoiding alcohol and other CNS depressants. Um, not to take it if, if pregnant or breastfeeding. Again, not to operate heavy machinery and to report any kind of painful frequent urination, uh, constipation, headache, insomnia, or confusion. Now, uh, dantrolene works on the muscles peripherally and it inhibits the release of calcium which decreases the strength of muscle contractions. It's, and it's also used um, you know, for the spasticity uh, with individuals uh, that have multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, and spinal cord injuries and strokes. Um, it does have a long half-life in it, so we got to keep that in mind for, uh, you know, especially our older folks there. Uh, remember, it is also used for that malignant hyperthermia. Um, now, our ad uh, it's contraindicated with liver issues. Um, our adverse e uh, events are, are effects, drowsiness, dizziness, lethargy, uh, diarrhea, fatigue, headache, nausea, vomiting, anorexia, and nervousness. It can cause the fatal hepatitis with jaundice uh, one month after starting the medication or if taken greater than 60 days. So we've got to monitor for the jaundice, monitor those liver function tests. Um, that uh, doesn't happen with short-term use. If, if the medication is not working within those, um, you know, soon after starting it, then uh, the medication should be discontinued because, uh, you know, of the side effects with the liver. It can cause some major problems there. Again, uh, contraindicated with central nervous system depressants and any impaired uh, liver issues. They, it, this does have the black box warning with it. 
and so got to check that liver function uh, prior to starting the medication. We want to teach the patient about, um, you know, when they change position, uh, they may experience, you know, dizziness and uh, drop the pressure and that kind of thing. So we've got to teach about that to do so slowly. Uh, report any kind of GI upset and to eat frequent small meals. Of course, avoiding alcohol and any other depressant, CNS depressant, and to report severe diarrhea, headache, and anorexia. Now, our next medication is cyclobenzaprine, and that is used for short-term uh, relief of muscle spasms. Again, this medicine has a long half-life. Uh, it is contraindicated with cardiovascular issues, uh, MIs and dysrhythmias, heart block, um, and can any kind of conduction disturbances, which is, you know, dysrhythmias, heart failure, uh, also hyperthyroidism, it is uh, contraindicated with as well. Needs to be uh, used with caution with patients who might have urinary retention, uh, increased intraocular pressure, and mild hepatic impairment. The adverse effects are drowsiness, dizziness, and anticholinergic effects. Uh, so you know that old saying, can't see, can't spit, can't pee, can't SH blank T. Um, may use it for three weeks. Uh, the maximum use of it should be three weeks there. And we need to watch about alcohol abuse with this as well, or alcohol use with this, because again, it is considered a CNS depressant, as well as any other CNS depressant. They need to avoid those and alcohol. Uh, they don't uh, need to operate heavy equipment, machinery, uh, and we need to know, is the medicine working? And then um, the tizanidine is um, used for acute and intermittent, intermittent management of increased muscle tone spasticity. Um, and its adverse effects include drowsiness, dizziness, constipation, dry mouth, hypotension. Um, and hypotension may be significant. Um, the drug uh, can also cause psychotic symptoms, including hallucination. Uh, so the nurse definitely would need to assess the patient about that kind of thing, um, assess about dizziness and sedation and and that kind of thing. Um, also need to assess the cardiovascular patient status um, and, you know, bradycardia and hypotension. In addition, we got to uh, check out the liver and renal function. Um, and um, we need to teach the patient about, you know, if they're experiencing dizziness, they need to sit still, don't get up. Don't change positions because they'll fall. Again, not using uh, heavy equipment, operating heavy equipment or driving, and to report any kind of unusual sensory effects such as hallucinations or delusions. Okay, that concludes your podcast.